Hmm. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to my office. Please, step inside. Take a seat uh, while I regale you with tales of this week's news. Um, which is to say, this week's loot picks. It is the 11th of November 2017, and first of all, I would like to congratulate Elder Scrolls V Skyrim for its 6th birthday. It's a birthday, it's a party, it's a birthday. Where were you guys uh, 6 years ago? Me, personally, I was at a midnight launch with Esprit here in chat. Uh, midnight launch to pick up the PS3 copy of the game. Boy, did I not know what I was getting myself into. Uh, of course, what I'm referring to is the not very good port of the PS3 version of Skyrim. I still did enjoy the game quite a bit on the PS3 for about like, I don't know, 200 hours. But man, the PS3 version was a special kind of suffering at times. Bad frame rate, long loading times, corrupting saves crashing, you know, all that good stuff, but you know, it was still a fun game, so I, have, I still have fun memories. Also, I wanna say, when people say stuff like, well, the Elder Scrolls main quest is so boring and not interesting and just terrible, that's not why you play Elder Scrolls, you always like install 8 million mods and then you go fuck around. Those people never play any part of the main quest. I'm convinced, because especially in Skyrim, the main quest is pretty damn cool. There's so many cool like scenes and events, and like uh, especially the ending. The place where Skyrim's mainline quest ends is so epic and cool. If you didn't do it and you played Skyrim, you missed out. That's my honest opinion here. Anyway, let's get into these news, shall we? So. Electronic Arts to acquire Respawn Entertainment. Respawn Entertainment, of course, are the guys behind the FPS Titanfall. Apparently, there's a new Titanfall in development, but you all, you, you all know what's going on here, right? Last week, we or was it the, the, the week before last? We talked about EA killing Visceral Games, who are well known for Dead Space, right? So everybody, everybody can guess where this is going. I don't think uh, the company is going to respawn from this acquisition. If you will appreciate the pun here. <sighs> yeah, I don't have much to say here. This is just gonna be terrible. <laughs> the next Titanfall game is probably gonna be like a super homogenized thing that's gonna be way less interesting than the previous two games. And then they will put Respawn to do something, again, not very interesting and just very safe. Which will not sell, because it's going to be completely, like, bland game. Number eight, uh, 845. And then just Respawn will get shuffled in under the bed with all the other companies that EA has acqu acquired. You know. I mean, if... if if this is not gonna repeat, now I'm gonna be happy, but I don't see this uh, going any other way. Yeah, I would also agree that Titanfall was one of the more interesting FPSs in the recent years. I guess we'll see how that goes, but I don't, I don't see this uh, in a positive light. Okay, so Tokyo Xanadu EX Plus for the PS4 launches December 8th in Europe. I was kind of surprised to see that this game still hasn't come out uh, in the first place, but uh, I'm not gonna complain. I'm not gonna complain. Supposedly there's a physical version which is kind of surprising. Yeah, I guess the Vita version is already out of the Taka Tokyo Zanaru. But the PS4 version, which is the EX Plus, the expanded version, is coming to PS4 this week, uh, this, week uh, this year. Also, there is a PC port in the works, for which currently there are closed beta signups. I'm gonna link this in chat, because if you wanna apply to beta test this game on the PC, you can still get in the applications end on November 12th. So if you're here on stream 
and you're in the chat I linked the, the links and stuff you can uh, try your hand there uh, usually the way this goes is if you get accepted you get like a obviously the game to test you will not be able to uh, most likely you will not be able to share any details with any, anybody you will, you will not be able to record footage and publish it you will not be able to stream it uh, that's how usually how closed beta go closed betas go you kind of agree to an NDA that's a non disclosure agreement but at the end of it I think usually how that goes you actually get a digital copy for Steam for free so I mean if you're interested in uh, trying a uh, Falcom's game, Falcom's action RPG in the vein of Ease and Xanadu, then I can only recommend you doing so. You'll probably have some good fun here, while also helping develop the PC port. I, I was thinking about this, but I already have so many games to play that I probably wouldn't get around doing this at all. Also, not being able to stream it kinda sucks, but eventually when it, do, when it would come out, you know, maybe maybe I will apply. Maybe I will apply. Maybe I'm gonna do that after the stream. But it wouldn't hurt to do so. Yeah, I guess. Sure. All right. Legend of Heroes: Trails of Cold Steel, one and two is coming to PS4 in Japan in September 2018. That's a lot of time, man. That's like a next. That's like a fucking next year. In Japan so if you're waiting to play Trails of Cold Steel on the PS4 you're probably gonna wait a while if you're uh, if you're interested in the English version anyway the third game has not even been announced for Western release so that's kind of interesting uh, the, the worst part about this whole trilogy thing for me personally is that the Western version does not have Japanese voice acting and I'm like what the fuck are you doing dude Fucking Exceed and was the other company? Was it Atlas? I think it was just Exceed. Exceed is like the last company that refuses to provide Japanese voice acting for some games. Some others, yes, but like Ease, for the longest time they didn't want to do it. And now with Ease 8, they did provide the Japanese voice acting, but that's because it's not actually Exceed doing the localization that was uh, NIS I mean Nissan uh, Nippon Inchi Software America which as we have seen from previous weeks the translation has been kind of botched but you know personally I'm gonna say I'll take a game the localized Japanese game that has dual voice uh, voiceovers and crappy text like a crappy translation in the text form over Amazing beautiful flowery speech and flowery text and only English dubs and That's just me like one of the I'm, I'm probably one of the only one of the very few people who think that the um, Original Muramasa translation on the Wii was Like completely acceptable and okay When I played Muramasa again on the Vita which had like new translation by you guessed it our old pals at Axis Games, uh, the text was way more flowery, like way more, I guess, I guess it, it was more like novel-like, but to me it was like, man, it was kind of annoying to read because there was like, just so much text, it was, to me it felt super unnecessary. Also uh, people complaining about the voice lines not matching with text in the original translation, uh, the new translation also didn't match, so I don't know, man. People just complain about the weirdest stuff. Anyway, let's move on to the next topic. The next topic is the Final Fantasy 15 multiplayer expansion is uh, launching like next week, so that's cool. Um, I've been waiting for the next uh, DLC mostly because there's gonna be a patch that's gonna allow us to accept more than one hunts at a time in the single player portion of the game, apparently. Now, there is a single player portion of this multiplayer DLC if you are not interested in playing with other people, which is perfect for people like me, <laughs> who don't have friends on the PS4 to play with. 
Yeah, I'm pretty interested in playing this. I would really want to see how this exactly works because the combat system in Final Fantasy XV isn't exactly uh, multiplayer friendly. At least it didn't seem to me that way. So uh, I'm guessing they had to change the combat system a little bit for the multiplayer portion because I don't really see the cooperative links and the parry links and all that stuff working in multiplayer. But maybe that's not such a big deal. Just have to have the party members close to each other while performing the backlinks and parry links. Maybe it's gonna work. I'm gonna be checking that out at some point. I'm not in a hurry, but I am definitely interested in all the DLCs for Final Fantasy XV. Oh man, so I'm not really gonna be covering Nintendo or Switch at any point. Uh, in my uh, newsy show because I'm not a Nintendo guy, I have no interest in Switch, but when good stuff happens, then I have to cover it. I have to give props, I have I have to give credit where credit is due, and you may remember, remember me complaining about, like, previously that the Xenoblade Chronicles X, I was quite interested in playing that, and maybe even buying the goddamn Wii U for that because the game looked so good. But the game did not survive the transition to the West all that well. It's censored in some parts and it also only has English voice acting. So I'm like, yeah, I'm probably not in a hurry to play that at all. So when I read this, the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Switch is gonna have day one Japanese audio DLC. I'm like, all right. All right, Nintendo. Good stuff. I have nothing to complain about here and I have to bring this to attention because this is Nintendo doing something good and I'm always happy to see that because Nintendo has been pissing me off for the longest time with some really dumb stuff so when I see them do something cool I gotta give it I gotta give it up and I gotta say cool things happen you know also like I said previously I don't I don't really wanna talk about things that I hate I don't want to talk things that... Uh, I just don't want to define myself by things I hate. I want to define myself by things I love and appreciate. So this is exactly it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The next topping is... Some, seems to be some sort of teaser for Single Kubasara announcement in the next year. This was kind of interesting, because the last game in the Single Kubasara series that was released was Japan only, it did not get released in the in the West, and it was uh, apparently, uh, okay, I it didn't play the game or anything like that, but simply judging by the name, Yukimura Den, it was all about the life and um, the history of Sanada Yukimura, and uh, like, not even a year later, there was the at least the announcement, not exactly the release, or but the announcement for uh, Samurai Warriors, Sana, uh, Sanada Den, um, wait, what was it called? Sanada Maru, that's it. That's basically uh, the, so this is the Capcom. Sengoku Basara belongs to Capcom. And Samurai Warriors, also known as Sengoku Muso, belongs to Koei Tecmo. And these two companies had the exact same idea to do the same kind of game, I guess. Because Sengoku Basara and Muso games are kind of comparable. But Basara has like more of an emphasis on combo systems like, uh, you know, in, in the vein of Devil May Cry. It's a bit more in-depth. So, Samurai Warriors, Sanada Maru is basically the same thing. Again, the, the feudal Japan in the Sengoku Jedi, and it's about the life of Sanada Ukimura. And the final DLC was, this, no, the second DLC for Nyo was about fucking Sanada Ukimura. I'm tired of seeing this dude, man. I don't get what's the what's the deal with this guy. Why is he so popular? I don't get it. I mean, I, I'm aware of the history of the of the of the dude, but when it comes to the games and the portrayal of the character, he never looks interesting to me. It's a similar deal with like Zhao Yun from Dynasty Warriors, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Anyway, if there's anything new happening with Sengoku Basara, I'm gonna be very happy. And if it's gonna get also released in the West, that would be even better. I guess we'll see about that. Uh, we'll see how Capcom trusts the Western market to be interested in stuff like this. 
I'm still waiting for Dragon's Dogma Online coming west. I'm also waiting for Onimusha remasters. Capcom should get on all those things. Also more information on uh, Deep Down would be cool. There's still PlayStation Experience in December, so maybe there is gonna be something about Deep Down, but I'm a bit worried that Deep Down may be buried. Deep Down. Now, this is kind of cool. So, I have played... Alright, this is no surprise to anybody here. I have played a Neptunia game or two in my time. I am a proud owner. I'm a proud owner of a Vita, so I definitely had to play uh, Neptunia games at some point in my life, obviously. And... Uh, the thing is, uh, after I played a few of those games, I quickly realized I probably don't need to play any more of those games in the franchise because they are pretty much the same fucking thing over and over and over, and over again with like one or two new gimmicks or new characters, which I don't really care about too much. So the reason why I'm covering this here is that there's supposed to be something new happening, something fresh, a new Neptunia project that will thousand percent exceed everyone's imaginations is in motion. It won't betray your expectations. I'm not so sure about any of those things, but I'm definitely inter interested to see what the hell are they talking about. Because the franchise is in desperate need of something new. And uh, that means like a new engine, new assets, new illustrations, new everything. Because their games have been recycling stuff forever and to a ludicrous degree. Now, I'm okay with recycling stuff to a large degree. Because I'm a fan of like hunting games, which, you know, there's a lot of belt swaps and like similar enemies and all that stuff. Recycling bosses and monsters and, you know, that's uh, it's alright. It's alright. But Neptunia has taken it to a fucking nth degree and it's not okay. It's too much. So I'm definitely interested in something new. That's basically why I'm covering this. There's not as much else to be said here. Very little information here. There's more focus on mobile games, but that's more like a that's a news for the Japanese crowd, not really the Western one. Near producer Yosuke Saito teases series future developments. Yeah, there's also not much to be said here, except that uh, they're recruiting for a new project. And they're joking around that, uh, uh, freaking Taroyoko is going to do anything for money, so, yeah, that, that worries me a little bit. You know, I did enjoy Automata a lot, but I have a lot of problems with the game. So, I'd like to see some something more, of course, because, well, the, here's the thing, okay, here's the thing. So, when it comes to Yoko Taro, I mean, Taro Yoko, this guy, this guy's tricky, this guy's name is tricky because usually these names are like switched around for the first name and the family name, but this guy is, this guy's tricky. Anyway, the thing here is that when it comes to his games, I always, or at least I was used to expect crazy stuff and, you know, something very unusual. But Automata was very, like, regular game. There wasn't all that many cool things or unusual or unexpected things happening, especially when it came to the like. Okay, so there there was some, there was a good number of video game storytelling stuff, but I felt like there was a lot of potential that was missed. A lot, a lot of potential. The characters were really weak in comparison to the first game, Near One. And, uh, yeah, there was like, I just didn't have such a connection to any any of the things that were happening in the game. Now, that may have been intentional because, you know, it was the story about androids trying to emulate human emotions. So, that, that may all be like the genius of Yoko telling us that, hey, you play this game and you will not feel so connected and you will not feel so emotional as to the previous game. Because this time around, it's not real people who are going through these things. And I kind of like the idea, but I don't know, man. Maybe I'm, I don't want to give Yoko too much credit, you know. I don't, I don't want to do that. Well, maybe I could. I don't know. Whatever. We'll see. 
If there's a new near or new whatever, I'm, I'm in. Because I want to see more stuff from Yoko Taro. This guy needs to make more games. For sure. It may not always be a massive hit, but it's always going to be interesting at least. Now, if there were some Dragon Guard remasters, I'd be okay with that too. One thing I... Uh, I was reading the comments here in, on Gematsu and there was one guy who had a really cool idea for a new project from uh, from uh, Yoko and there was uh, like... Uh, what was it exactly? Oh yeah, so take a game and set it immediately after Drakengard 1, the ending where uh, like near 1 picks up, picks, up, picks up after, you know, because if you don't read Grimoire near, which is like a uh, which is like a collection of interviews and articles by, you know, the development team of the Dragon Guard and Nier one. You wouldn't even know how how complex and how in depth the history, like between Dragon Guard one and Nier is. But they definitely mapped everything. There's like a seriously huge and like a very deep timeline between the two games. And all those events that are described in that are crazy. And I would love to see that in a game. They would be sick. They would be fucking they would be they would be awesome. I would love to see that. I was kind of disappointed, you know, because uh, the automata takes place like, I don't know, three thousand years or how many thousand years after a near one, so I was like, man, it's probably not gonna be any connections to anything, right? It's gonna be very it's gonna be very disconnected from it so people don't need to play the first one so they can play this one but they still want to attach the name near i just uh, was very uh, i had very mixed feelings about all that like if, you, if if emil wasn't in automata it basically isn't even near theoretically it could be just a completely separate game and it probably what it that's probably what it should have been if you ask me. If you want to continue near as a franchise, when it comes to the story and stuff, map out the time between Drakengard 1 and near. That place needs filling and it's ripe with some good stuff, I think. Okay, Injustice 2. I think this is the only fighting game news for this week. There's been some other stuff, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't anything uh, too interesting, so I decided to uh, not cover it. With Injustice 2, it launches on PC on November 14th. That's also next week. That's interesting. I think the open beta is still available. So if you want to test it out, uh, I think the update, I mean, uh, the download should be still available right now on Steam. I think. Uh, it doesn't say when does it end here, so I'm not sure. I didn't really look into it because I played some Injustice 2 on the PS4 and it was alright, but uh, not my kind of game, not my, not the kind of game I want to spend time and learn. Because whenever I was playing Injustice 2, I was like, man, I could be playing Street Fighter or Guilty Gear or Tekken. And I would probably have more fun with those games. And uh, that's probably true. There's one other thing attached to Injustice 2. Uh, last night there was ES uh, the ESL. E League finals, which is like was like a big tournament, uh, invitational, uh, in uh, in the old America, which was won by Dragon, and as far as I'm as, I'm as far as I remember, Dragon also won Evo, so this guy is on a roll. He's doing pretty well. I think he won like I don't know, several several tens of thousands of dollars. Pretty good stuff if you ask me. But more importantly. Um, there was a combat pack 3 announced, which uh, has these characters in. Let me move it up a little bit. Now, personally, I have absolutely no nostalgia for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I did watch some shows, I did play Hyperstone Heist on the Sega Mega Drive, but I don't know, man. I don't really care. I have like no sentimental value for these guys. I do like that this is possible in a fighting game, though it is not unprecedented. We have seen Battletoads in the Killer Instinct, which I also think are cooler, 
Battletoads are definitely way cooler than uh, TMNT. But, you know, it's a matter of preference, I guess. Anyway, there's also Enchantress and uh, the Atom Dude. I don't even remember what this guy's name is. I have never, I have never heard about this guy. He, I guess he's the Ant-Man of DC. He changes shapes, like, uh, the, he, he changes sizes, that's what I should say. And, uh... He can glow, he can be like super small, he can be super big, and yeah, he's basically Ant-Man, I guess. So I wonder if these are gonna be like four separate characters, or if they're gonna be if they're different uh, moves and weapons will be gear. But it seems like there should be four characters because the previous combat packs had always oh was it three or six characters? I guess it was th three characters. Originally, it was Red Hood and uh, Sub Zero and some other dude. I don't fucking remember. Holy shit! But more importantly, what I wanted, what I wanted to say is that I'm still fucking waiting. Oh man, I forgot to show this. All right, I gotta find this though. Okay, I'm gonna yippee the app while I'm looking for the thing. So the thing is, I wanted to complain here. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna complain. I'm, I'm on, I'm on, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking on Twitch, I'm gonna complain. So, they put fucking Ninja Turtles in Injustice, but I'm still waiting for this guy. Let me look at it. What was the name of the comic? I keep forgetting the name of the comic. Oh yeah, Die Laughing. That's the name of the comic, and it's a Batman slash Judge Dredd comic book. And this shit is freaking awesome. And I wanna complain because they put fucking Ninja Turtles in this bullshit, but they don't put Judge Dredd in? Come on, man. What are you doing? Look at this artwork, man. I want Judge Dredd in any fighting game. And Injustice is obviously the best pick because there is precedent of DC uh, crossing over with Judge Dredd, which I think belongs to AD 2000, which is a British comic series, or whatever. Man, that would be so awesome, man. J Judge Dredd in Injustice? I would love to see that shit. That would be sick. I mean, look at this. This is like exactly what Injustice is, and they don't do it. Here it is, 2080. I don't understand, man. They are dropping the ball so fucking hard with this. But, the, like, okay, obviously the Ninja Turtles are more popular than Judge Dredd. I think that's not a controversial thing to say. But, how popular is Blue Beetle? Or that Adam guy? Or Dr. Fate? I have never even heard about these characters. You know what I heard about? Fucking Judge Dredd. And he's a perfect fit. He's fucking beating dudes with his fist, and then he has a special gun, which is like eight million moles of fire. That's perfect. Man. It just that's perfect fit. And you could also customize the armor. Holy shit! It's a it's a perfect fit. I don't understand how is he not in the game. But you know, whatever. I'm not a producer of Injustice, unfortunately. So whatever. <sighs> anyway, if you want to check it out, I think it's uh, the open beta should be still on Steam, so feel free. Blue Beetle has been in the shows. What shows? Oh, I, oh yeah, there's TV shows of the DC stuff. I stopped watching Flash and Green Arrow. I stopped watching Green Arrow because the guy who, the actor of Green Arrow, he's not an actor. That guy is like, I don't, I, I'm like looking at this guy and I'm like. Okay, he's buff, he looks cool, but he can't act for shit. And I, I, I can't watch it, I can't watch it. With, with Flash, my problem was the girl character, like the love interest. Oh my god, that was so annoying. So painful to watch. Animated shows, damn. I've never seen any of those. The only animated Batman that I've seen was a couple episodes of Batman Beyond when it was aired on TV over here in 
Czech Republic. That was cool. The Batman Beyond opening. That's pretty cool. But the only other animated thing was a movie. Uh, it was called Gotham Knight. And it's actually anime because it's uh, it's like several, several short stories. And each one is animated by a different Japanese studio. And boy, I gotta say, if you want to watch some good animated Batman, check out Gotham Knight. That shit is awesome. There's even like a Gnosiology freaking short story, which I really appreciated. Some really cool, some really cool stuff. Also, Kevin Conroy voices Batman again, so you know, you know it's gonna be good. All right, we're about, we're winding down here to the last stopping. You still watch the Adam West Batman every now and again? I've never seen any episodes. I've only seen like the meme gifs and stuff. Maybe I should check it out sometime. Alright, the final topping of the of the show. Reminder, your weekly reminder to buy Alchemy HD on PS4, Xbox, or PC and slash or PC. Because this game is amazing, it's beautiful, it feels good. It's just nice and everybody should play it and buy it because this game was not successful when it first launched on the PS2 it was not successful when it came to Wii and it was not successful when it came to PS3 so I wanted to succeed like cumul cumulatively eventually now maybe would be the time because it's gonna be on the freaking personal computer and the PS4 and I guess the X-Bone too, if you're into that. But... Buy this game. Buy this game. Buy Okami HD. Buy Okami HD. Okay, December 12th. Or 13th? Oh. I guess that's the PC version. Seems like the PC version is later. No. Oh, in, in Japan it's later. In Japan, the PC version. Whoa, that is so weird. Japanese PC version of a game. Wow, what a weird timeline this is. <laughs> anyway. That's it for this week. Man. It's been only half an hour? Holy cow. There wasn't much news to talk about here, huh? Well, I guess uh, that's gonna be it. And uh, I guess... Uh, I guess uh, Thanks, thanks guys for watching, thanks for tuning in, I'm tired, sorry for the low energy stream, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I will do my best not to miss any uh, Saturdays, 8pm, just like today, and I'll catch you guys uh, next week. See ya!